three. Hello, John. Hello, Margaret. And so Simon Harris has been elected. Okay, he's now the leader of Fine Gael. He's also our Taoiseach. Um, Simon was born in 1986 at a time when Ireland's unemployment at the time was at 17%. He hails from Greystones. He's had um, portfolios in education, research, innovation, and science. Um, and in 2019, he survived a no-confidence vote on the cost of the new children's hospital. Let's talk about Simon Harris. Yes, and uh, there was also uh, various other little issues uh, when his Minister of Health was a threatened strike. And um, so he he had a baptism of fire. But before that, I think uh, when he was 15, he was he was um, looking for uh, uh, to, for uh, people with um, uh, handicaps to be treated the same as ordinary people in schools and that. So he seemed to be active from a young age. And then he, he was elected uh, top to poll for the Wicklow County Council. And and uh, so he, he did his uh, apprenticeship there, if you like. And then uh, he, he went for um, the election uh, in... in, in um, in in the Wicklow constituency and and this was an unusual one in the three Fine Gaelers, three Fine Gael TDs were elected and he came in last. He wasn't expecting to be elected, but he was, and then he was the youngest on the doll and so he had a charm life and he was uh, minister uh, for health and uh, he presided over some what I call problems um, decisions. Uh, that affected um, our understanding of um, um, marriage and all the rest of it and that type of thing. And and then um, he, he, he um, whatever, uh, when his minister were held, however, this business of James Street being chosen, before that it was the matter. Uh, it was about the worst site in the country that anyone would want to build a children's hospital because uh, they need a bit of greenery, don't they? I mean, they need to be in a in a setting where uh, they can see a bit of greenery and trees and that. And when their people visit them, they can kind of get in handy enough. At the Lake of Conley, where Conley Hospital is, and, uh, and uh, plenty of land there and um, all the rest. And somebody offered that had built hospitals to, for nothing. Um, and uh, it's provided it was built there, so... I mean, what more could you guess? And Mr. Varigal was Taoiseach just at that time and refused to meet him. Mr. Pat Kenny did a programme about it and was quite annoyed that uh, when he interviewed this man, a fellow called Kelly, a very decent individual. So it looks as if they have had a, already got a, an agenda and boy, James Street was picked for a children's hospital. It cost enough fortune. And it cost a fortune to run. So Mr. Simon Harris was Minister for Health. And that decision was taken. So um, and now he's going to be um, Taoiseach, stroke Prime Minister, and the leader of the Fine Gael Party. So which, which is um, normally... Uh, save your time and it becomes uh, becomes possible. But with the situation that the Fine Gael being a fall and the Greens are in, they don't want to stay in power for the whole time. So they'll put up with anything, won't they? That's it. The um, I think um, one thing we can say about, about Simon Harris is that he comes across as a kind of a, a, an approachable man. And that's a very, very important uh, character trait to have on somebody that's a leader or especially a Taoiseach you know I think his predecessor Leo Radker um, wasn't very approachable he didn't come across as an approachable character for whatever reason I do not know but that's the impression I got so I think he's off to a good start in the sense of the, his character traits and his he did start politics at, as we say at the age of 15 he was an activist there for um for healthcare oh, she was and uh, whether his family were some way involved it doesn't that's not known and I uh, born on Greystone, um, which is a fairly considered a prosperous sort of an area and I wonder what area he, he was living in 
uh, there's a nice uh, well-to-do area called Woodlands. And there was a hotel there, a Woodlands Hotel. I don't know whether it lasted, but um, there was nice houses built there, detached houses. And uh, like there's res, as they say. And uh, they had a nice big garden and uh, a bit of prestige attached to living there. Uh, but now, because uh, oh, I, I lived convenient to Greystones between Delgany and Greystones, a place called Killing Carrick. So I'm familiar with, with the general area. And with regards to Simon Harris, I knew his uncle, Sean Harris, or maybe it was John. Uh, but he had a big job and um, with a company that employed 500, and he he was um, very successful and... Uh, he was a member of the club that I was in called the Suburban Club in Bray. So I'm pretty familiar with the general overall situation. And um, Simon Harris, um, is, um, he was active from a young age. So he seemed to be uh, politics in his blood. Now, where it came from, I do not know. Uh, but uh, be that as it may, when you start doing what he was doing at 15, uh, I, and he, he lobbied for it, so he he certainly, and he went to the um, um, uh, secondary school, I think, in Greystones, um, and he, he got a good Catholic education, and though he, he uh, with some of the policies he pursued, it didn't seem to jet with, the, with, the, with being a, a staunch Catholic, but be that as it may, when you're in government or in politics, you often have to take the seat. It's probably that it's not something that you might be in favour of, but this is the way it's gone. And so Simon Harris now has reached uh, what you might call the pinnacle of anyone's career to be Taoiseach, stroke Prime Minister. And uh, he's a youngish man. But there's one little problem that he has, uh, a health problem. He suffers from Crohn's disease. And that's a, an, an eternal serious problem. And um, but it can be treated, of course. And um, being Taoiseach, he's going to have a fair bit of stress in that position, I would think. And um, so he's going to be attacked probably on all fronts. Uh, but we wish him well. We wish anybody well that's taken on the responsibility of being a Taoiseach stroke. Prime Minister and trying to direct the uh, way things go. I hope he has learned something from his experience and to try and do the, what we call the right thing. And uh, he's one of the youngest. He was the youngest TD when he was elected. And he got the raised privilege to either pause or second Enda Kenny, when Enda Kenny became Taoiseach. So That's there it. you are. Enda Kenny then was, uh, he, they lost a post. And him, uh, Mr. Barrycore, and various other parties, and the first part. So, um, he, he, he um, uh, but Mr. Harris had a, a, a <coughs> position. I thought somewhere there did he did he lose his seat one time? Did who lose the seat? Um, Simon Harris. I no, there, 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 I, I think that there was a there was a no confidence vote two thousand nineteen. He survived that, and that was to do with the cost of the children's hospital. Maybe he did. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm not aware. Exactly. Yeah, but I, I thought that uh, 1984 or something uh, in Dublin City, Sorry. but maybe it's a misnomer um, on, that I saw on, on some uh, report. Sorry, uh, are, but, we, are um, we talking about Simon Har Are we talking about Simon Harris? Oh, we are. Well, that's who we're talking about. Well, what year did you say? Did you say... Did, 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 <laughs> hang on, John. Did you say 1984 or 1994? What? Are you, what? you got to remember, he's born no, in 1986. Some, <laughs> something in, in, I'm not sure what, 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 what age it was. <laughs> well, what, what time did you say he was elected to the to the doll? Uh, he, he, he was, was born that? in 1986, okay? So he was he was elected at all. Well, I think. He, he was, oh, was he born in eighty six? He's only oh, he's only he's only a kid. What? <laughs> anyway, look, <laughs> the thing is, okay. Um, I think any the advice I would give him, and I don't know if you'd agree with this now, is that maybe he should dumb down the social cause, social justice causes. We've had enough of it, you know. That it's been going on now for ten years, 
And it's all very, as I said in the, in the previous video, it's like teenage idealism. He needs to get back to very basic practical practical stuff like bringing back our our builders yeah. from abroad to build houses, you know. Um, exactly. He, and on top of that, like, he has about a year when there's an election due. So he'll have his name up in lights, of course, uh, being, being Taoiseach and so, uh, Prime Minister and leader of the Fianna Gael party. So he has an important position and uh, we wish anybody well, especially when he's taken over at such a critical time with this hospital, uh, which must be going to cost a fortune by the time it's finished, plus a cost a fortune to run because of where it's situated and, and all the expense and trying to get nurses for it. I don't know how they're going to get nurses, but that's another story mm. uh, we're talking about, Simon Harris. We wish him well, and we hope that he will, his rule will be good and that he will do some good for the time that he has left and to try and reclaim some of the stuff and have a look at all these NGOs, uh, non-government offices, employing 164,000 and costing 13 billion, of which a lot is coming from Atlantic phil phil philanthropies or whatever you call it. Atlantic, Atlantic philanthropies. Another old war that you it's a new award, and when I was doing my leaving cert and all the rest of those type of expressions, philanthropies or whatever it was. Philanthropy. <laughs> we were there, to, things like that. And NGOs were, I think, maybe something from space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, uh, UFOs, <laughs> that's so NGOs. Um, it's constant so... fortune, and I think they should be sort of head for the hills, shall we say. And save a bit of money because they're costing the government about six billion or something. Yeah. An awful amount of money for all these people uh, employing and according to nearly pro government and pro. Uh, so the, the fact that they lost the, the referendum and the people had the decency and the common sense to vote no, capital N O. We did a video on it and we promoted that too, and so did many others. So suffice to say uh, that uh, they should dispense with all these, the cost of fortune, and uh, let them sort of uh, paddle their own canoe and be like the rest of us, because we don't want to be dictated to what we should think and run, you know, when we're running a country. We should be treated with respect. And I hope Simon Harris, when he becomes Taoiseach, which he is now, apparently, and he's on the hot seat, as the fella says. I hope there's a cushion there at the sort of for the strain. And that he um a pretty good idea is to whistle. And be in good humor. <laughs> and yes, take that's it it. and try and do the right thing for uh, for the people. Not for quang, not for these uh NGOs, non government offices. Yes. Get down to brass tacks. Run it for the Good of the people, you know, vested interests. One thing he could do, and he'd be very, very good. He has been accused, um, as Tina Gale have been accused of being ageist in terms of like uh, the older members of uh, the government uh, that have moved on. But I think he should, he should bring in a few older members if he could at all possible into his cabinet. You know, wisdom is a great thing, and I think what about a few pensioners. That's what I'm saying. You what know, about, you what need about a few pensioners. You can do it, John Dave Malone Brown and the cabinet. Them, don't forget, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, they'd have to, they'd have to sort of uh, treat me with more respect than they're in the habit of doing. I wouldn't want to be insulted right, left, and centre if I happen to occupy a hot seat. I don't think John Malone that they could cope with the John Malone energy. I can barely cope with it myself. Okay, that if John Malone <laughs> was on the cabinet, that. They'd be up at the crack of dawn every morning at six o'clock and they wouldn't miss an appointment because that's my experience of John Malone. No, and by the way, they'd have to have their P's and Q's right. Yes. Uh, none of this business are going down uh, the way they went down with this hospital in James Street. Mm -hmm. I'd like to plant them over there in James Street and see how they get on and try and drive over there. You'd need a, one of these drones if you could fit in it and up in the sky and then land there. 
A brother boys, how can you drive to it? No, one, one lad that I know took an hour and a half to try and get to it, and he was already in Mount Brown, which is not too far from it. He could have walked to it quicker. Yeah, the new hospital is it's it's a very built up area. It's chock a block with traffic, you know, and oh, chock a block. So Dublin, uh, there's a Dublin. So there's a lot of places you can't go in Dublin now because uh, the Greens, uh, the Green Party has sort of. Uh, Closed it off, and of course, on the street, the Wood Street in Europe now is 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 a basket case. I don't know what to make of it. And then there's a a big steel thing sticking up in the middle of it, giving everybody a fright. If you had a nightmare, that's what you think. I had a few nightmares, and I think I was that spike. I thought it was on the top of us. Mm-hmm. John Malone, we wish Simon Harris all the best. It will be very interesting to see. Well, yes, because uh, isn't that the best way to do it? Wish the chap well, and and uh, he's from Greystones and the general Bray area, which I'm very familiar with. I'm familiar with Greystones as well. Mm-hmm. I dined there in my time, as well as everything else. And uh, I'm very familiar with it. I had a very good friend that had a shop, one of these old style shops. And sometimes they used it in films. It was that old fashioned. A fella called Leo Ayrton in the square in in uh, there's a bit of a park there but you wouldn't uh, you'd meet yourself come on back and often time the summer there's a lot of undesirable sitting in a drinking uh, you know what whatever they're at God help them instead of going for a walk and perhaps a swim in the summer that's what they're stuck so um, folks can't use it the way they might uh, so uh, I'm familiar with with, with Greystones uh, one of the snags was that uh, there was the Latouche Hotel. That closed uh, uh, years ago, and we often do it in this, myself and Julie. We often walk from Bray to Greystones, six miles over hills and down hills. It must have been as fit as a fiddle that time. And uh, we'd have a tea, a pot of tea and a couple of scones in, in uh, the Latouche and then get the bus home. You know, so that was our Sunday, and it was a very pleasant way of of um and in the summertime going going along, and up 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 the hills because it was a walk you could walk along the cliffs. Now, mind you, you wouldn't want to be uh, kind of staggering because uh, there was a good drop down to the sea. So um, I'm very familiar with it, and so I wish Mister Simon Harris long life and happy and you know and be uh and be a success and do the best he can and try and improve things because they need improving yeah thank you very much john right uh, thanks very much oliver i hope uh the weather keeps up for simon harris and that there doesn't be a strong wind or or that it's gone a bit cloudy at the moment i expect a super rain that's it bye now I know.